Well, the mix series is done. So I thought what I'd do now is just get back to what originally my channel was about. And it was really to help people that are just coming over to Reaper to show them little tips and tricks and, you know, little odd things that you might not notice at first about Reaper and a lot of things that I didn't find out for years. Even reading the forums still missed a lot of little things and I'm still finding things. I mean, the beauty of Reaper is you can set it up how you want and then stop there if you want to. If that's where you're happy with your workflow, etc. Or you can go deeper in. I'm one of these people that I like to find out how it works a little bit more, but I'm not, you know, I don't go too far. I, I like to just set it up how I like to set it up and, and work, you know, because, I mean, at the end of the day, time is money. So, um, but let's just get on with this. And I am just wanted to go through... A few little things, just little tips that might not be totally obvious at first with Reaper. Um, I've got in front of me just a little drum loop, nothing major. I mean, what the music doesn't really matter if I just let you have a little blast. Okay, that's it's just something that we can use as an audio file. Now, to start with, the first thing I will say is if you're just coming over to Reaper, I'll put a link in the description, but go to the Southwest Studios and download download this SWS extensions. You can get it from the Reaper website as well, I think on the downloads page or uh, the stash or something, you'll find it. Um, but these are really important actions that you can add to, to what actions that come with Reaper already. And all of these things, all of these buttons up here are worked by these actions lists. I mean, let's just pick, if we go back up to the custom ones, which is usually my buttons, and let's just pick, say the swell button, which is over here, and we can have a look at what actions are involved, and you can see there's a whole lot of actions all chained together to create this effect. I mean, these buttons can be one it, action, it could be, as you saw, a list of a lot of actions. It varies. So that's the first thing I'll say. I'll put a link in the description to the SWS extensions. Go get them, install them. You will thank yourself later. Uh, next thing I wanted to show you was um, I got I saw there was uh, something on the Facebook page about the the clip gain, for example. But there's going to be more involved in this. Um, if you notice at the top of the my um, item here. Uh, I have a lot of little buttons. Now, for example, I can mute, I can make notes, uh, and I can add effects just to that item, not to the track, just to the item. So if I had, you know, other drum parts in uh, this uh, track here, well, let's copy this. Um, Okay, so what I can do is I can go in, I can put rear comp, and that is just on this item, not on this item. If you notice here, there's no effects on that item. This is a pair item effects that you can put on, which is just amazing. So we can get rid of that for a minute. So also, you've seen I can put in some um, envelopes etc now how to get to this is if we go into options preferences and if you scroll down to appearance then media and if you look down here these are all the buttons that you can have show up well these are all the buttons but this is you can have them show up even if it's not um, active at the time so also if we go down here you have clip gain um, there's two ways of doing it. You can have it, if you watch the, the cursor here, it turns to a double arrow, then you can drag your clip gain down from Unity downwards. Okay. Now how I like to do it is if you select this button here, so you add, you adjust the, the item volume with a volume knob. If we apply that close that. Now the reason I like this is uh, you can see here at the end there's a knob on each item. With the knob you can actually go plus 
about, I think it's about 18, yeah, 18 dB. Double click and it sets it back to unity, so you can, or you can go minus. With the line, you can only turn it down. So that's the advantage of the knob. Uh, next little thing, I've got a couple of compressors on here. Now, if you want to do some kind of parallel compression and you want to use the wet dry knob on your compressor, then you're good to go. You have no problem. But if you have a favorite compressor like this one, which doesn't have a wet dry knob on it, don't fear. Up at the top here, there is a wet dry knob above every effect and this is per effect so if I set this to say 50-40% go up to rear comp you see that rear comp is still 100% wet so this is per effect in fact I can bring the effect out and you can see that each button is for its own own effect you can see that's 100% and that's not so you can do some parallel compression with this with your uh, favourite compressor, so if we put it up to 100% wet, have a listen, and then we can take it right down to dry, and blend it in as you wish. So there's just a few little tips, I and mean, then I'll do more of these again. I just want to do these quick little videos to show you some things that you can find out in Reaper. Uh, any questions? Anything that you would like to know? Even if I don't know, it might be interesting to find out. Then just put a comment and let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe, please. <laughs> see you in the next one. Bye.